Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 22nd of July. India reports record COVID-19 recoveries in 24 hours with over 28,000 cured or discharged. Protest continues against enforced disappearances of political activists in Pakistan Sindh. And Nepal reopens after 120 days of coronavirus lockdown but fear remains. And now for all the details. India's northeastern Assam province is battling flood of epic proportions which has killed more than 85 people in the province and displaced millions since May. Assam Chief Minister Sarbananda Sonowal said that central government has made sincere efforts to find a permanent solution to the flood and erosion problem of the province. Two more people lost their lives in flooded Morigaon and Nagaon district of India's northeast Assam province on Tuesday, taking the death toll from the latest spate of floods to 87. The Brahmaputra River and its tributaries continue to flow above the danger level. As per a report from the Assam Disaster Management Authority or ASDMA, more than 2.4 million people in 24 districts have been affected and 44,498 people are in 397 relief camps across the province. Since heavy rains are expected in the days ahead, authorities said that it will take a while before the water recedes. Authorities released 37 animals after giving them treatment post they were rescued from the flooded Kaziranga National Park. In Kaziranga, nine rare rhinos have drowned with most of the land in the park, a World Heritage Site being underwater. Assam is hit by flooding every rainy season, despite flood control efforts. We have rescued uh, about uh, 57 numbers of elephant, uh, 57 numbers of animals in this flood, out of which uh, we could release 37 numbers of animals. Meanwhile, floods have also ravished India's eastern Bihar province, with Sitamari and Darbanga being the most affected districts where flood water has damaged properties and has rendered thousands homeless. On Tuesday in Darbanga, a pregnant woman in labor was rescued from a flooded area by locals on a makeshift raft and was taken to the health center. India has recorded the highest ever COVID-19 recoveries after 28,472 patients were discharged in a single day, taking the total number of recovered patients to 753,049 on Wednesday. The country's recovery rate now stands at 63.13%. India on Wednesday registered the highest ever COVID-19 recoveries after 28,472 patients were discharged in a single day, taking the total number of patients that have recovered to 753,049. This is also the highest number of COVID-19 patients cured or discharged in 24 hours and has strongly boosted the recovery rate to 63.13%, the country's health ministry said. India's COVID-19 cases tally now stands at 1,192,915, with 28,732 deaths so far. Meanwhile, the government in the Indian capital has decided to conduct zero surveillance every month after results of a recent survey in Delhi, which remains the third most affected region in the country, showed that 23.48% people had developed antibodies for COVID-19. यानी दिल्ली की टोटल आबादी का एक चौथाई हिस्सा उसमें एंटीबॉडीज पाई गई हैं। इसका मतलब कि दिल्ली की एक चौथाई आबादी के अंदर इन्फेक्शन हो चुका है और वो लोग रिकवर कर चुके हैं। उसमें से ज्यादातर लोगों को नहीं पता था कि उनको इन्फेक्शन हुआ है। India has the world's third biggest outbreak of the coronavirus below the United States and Brazil in confirmed infections. Health officials have, however, said. The number of COVID-19 deaths per million population in India continues to be among the lowest in the world. Moving on, 
Local residents, including families of victims, took to streets in Pakistan's Sindh province to highlight the plight and stop and force disappearances of political activists by security agencies. The protesters demanded the immediate release of abducted political activists. Protesters, including family members of victims, held a massive protest rally outside Hyderabad Press Club in Pakistan's Sindh province to stop enforced disappearances of political activists by the security agencies. The protesters, including women and children, were seen holding posters and pictures of abducted political activists and demanded their immediate release. Sin National Voice, an organization which organized the rally, said in a statement that political activists of Sindh were abducted and forced disappeared by Pakistan's intelligence agency, Inter-Services Intelligence, and Pakistani Rangers since years. Their leadership of national movements were assassinated, brutally tortured to death, and thrown in wild roads after being kept in detention centers for years. According to Sin National Voice, recently several activists including Nawab Meher, Akib Chandio and Shakil Haider were abducted. It alleged that security agencies are spreading fear amongst common people of Sin by sabotaging political activists. The victims now seek help from international human rights organizations and the United Nations to intervene and protect the Sindhis in Pakistan. A massive sit-in protest was held recently by hundreds of people associated with hotel and transport sectors against the closure of tourism in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit Baltistan amid coronavirus lockdown. Hundreds of people associated with hotel and transport sectors recently staged a sit-in protest against the closure of tourism in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit Baldistan amid coronavirus lockdown. The protesters raised slogans against Islamabad and blamed that other businesses have been allowed to reopen, but due to government's lockdown policies, their livelihood has been badly affected and they are staring at an uncertain future. They said they are not being allowed to resume their businesses despite assuring that they will follow precautionary measures. We want to follow the SOPs and follow the control of tourism. We are also aware of this disease and we are also aware of this disease. And inshallah, we are civilized people and our hospitality is our service. In Gilgit, Baldistan, a large number of people are unemployed while some just manage to fetch the minimum amount required for sustenance. Locals claim the inactive administration in the illegally occupied region has not shown any interest in the problems even at the time of this pandemic and has provided no relief. In news from Afghanistan, officials of the Afghan Chamber of Commerce and Investment have said that Afghanistan's exports to Indian markets have doubled since 2016 and exports to Pakistani markets slightly increased during this period. However, a number of businessmen have said that exports have faced serious problems during the current year following the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic. Afghanistan's exports to Indian markets have doubled since 2016, officials of the Afghan Chamber of Commerce and Investment or ACCI said on Tuesday. According to ACCI statistics, last year Afghanistan exported $460 million worth of products to the Indian markets and India remained one of the largest markets for Afghanistan during this time. Afghan exports to the Pakistani markets during last year amounted to around $298 million and increased just slightly during this period. The business community has however called on the government to determine an effective strategy to help Afghan businessmen increase their exports to regional markets. After the outbreak of the COVID-19, the Afghan exports significantly decreased, and experts say that they could be less than the figure it was last year. The doubling of Afghanistan's exports to India assumes significance in these trying economic times when every country is struggling to sustainably prop up its economy. Earlier on Monday, six trucks carrying goods from Afghanistan arrived in India's northern Atari area to facilitate trade. Exports from Afghanistan were suspended due to the coronavirus pandemic. 
Moving on, Sri Lanka has decided to postpone the reopening of its international airports till early September following the recent spike in COVID-19 cases from a drug rehabilitation centre in northern part of the country, an official said on Tuesday. The airports were earlier expected to open in August. Sri Lanka will postpone the reopening of its international airports till early September following the recent spike in COVID-19 cases from a drug rehabilitation centre in Kandakadu in the northern part of the country, officials said on Tuesday. The decision was taken following discussion with the President's office and health officials, a senior official from the airport and aviation services said. The Sri Lankan government had earlier decided to reopen airports in August after closing them in March to prevent the spread of the virus. According to Health Ministry, the number of COVID-19 infected patients rose to 2,730 in Sri Lanka on Tuesday after more people tested positive for the virus from the Kandakaru cluster. Out of the total infected in the island nation, 2,048 patients have recovered, while 11 deaths have been reported so far. In news from Nepal, increased vehicular movement was witnessed in Nepal's capital Kathmandu on Wednesday as nationwide coronavirus lockdown imposed since March ended from midnight with partial restrictions. Businesses are preparing to return back to operations. However, fear among the people is yet to seed. Vehicular movement on roads started the rise in Nepal's capital Kathmandu on Wednesday as nationwide coronavirus lockdown imposed since four months ended from midnight with partial restrictions. However, the fear among the people is yet to cede. The lockdown was placed on March 24 as the Himalayan nation reported its second case of infection, which by now has crossed over 17,000 with 40 deaths. The country's recovery rate stands at 60%. With resumption of various services in a phased manner, businesses in Nepal are preparing to return back to operations, keeping aside the order they face during the lockdown. While most economic activities can open, educational institutions, religious places, salons and public gatherings are still not allowed. Hotels and restaurants will be allowed to open from 30th July. Uh, Meanwhile, as Nepal fights coronavirus pandemic, another challenge of combating floods remains. Flash floods triggered by days of monsoon rains led to water logging in parts of Kathmandu on Tuesday. Incessant rains have lashed Nepal for days, triggering landslides and flood water in 26 of the country's 77 districts, claiming at least 125 lives since June, while 51 others remain missing, officials said. With the target of providing protection to the local residents from shelling during the unprovoked ceasefire violations by Pakistan, the construction of underground community bunkers has started in villages along the line of control in Baramulla district of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory. Local authorities in India's northern Baramulla district of Jammu and Kashmir Union territory construct underground bunkers for civilians who often live in a fear of shelling and firing in the border villages. The government has undertaken the task of building the bunkers along the border areas to reduce casualties during ceasefire violation by Pakistan. As many as 16 underground bunkers will be built in the Uri area of the district, out of which work on six of them is underway. Troops. The troops of arch rivals India and Pakistan intermittently exchange fire along the de facto border line of control. The firing affects the villagers residing in the area too, as bullets and mortar shells sometimes land on their properties resulting in loss of lives, injuries and physical damages.
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Asia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.